Welcome to day one of our Horror Nights week. As you know, it's an annual tradition here on the Nights of Horror for us to cover Horror Nights for an entire week um, and show love to the past, the present, and the future of Horror Nights um, as we gear up for uh, Horror Nights 2023. Uh, today, we will be discussing our top 10 mazes um, since we've been going to the event. Um, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that I just began attending the event in 2019. Um, so we're going on to year four of Horror Nights for myself. And Tony here um, has been attending since 2012, if I'm not mistaken. 11. 2011. <laughs> it was a year. It was a year. 2011. 2011. So he's a bit more of a veteran in the game. Um, but today, yeah, we'll be listing our top 10 mazes um, that we have walked through. Um, so I cannot cheat and go... Uh, What's uh, La Llorona 2012 or something. But, uh, you know what I mean? we, we got to go through the ones we've been through. Um, and so uh, we'll all kick us off here today. At number 10, um, a maze that um, is going to be coming back with its sequel uh, this year, going back to 2021 in its second or maybe third time at the event, The Exorcist. Uh, one of my favorite walkthroughs that I have gone through. Um, one of the absolute scariest walkthroughs. Um, in that soundstage, um, and that soundstage always delivers with great facades, um, and The Exorcist was probably my favorite one I have seen thus far, um, as you walk into the iconic cover. Um, and then once you get into that maze, um, you know, you get to see Pazuzu here and there. Even though there was black walls in this maze, I thought the utilization of those black walls was really good, because you'd be going through, it would be dark, you were like, I don't know what's coming, and the next thing you know, blue hole, blue hole drops, there's Pazuzu, or like a an image of Pazuzu pops up, so I thought that was really good. Um, and then, in addition, due to the limitations of this film being basically filmed in all, most of the scary parts being in the one room uh, with Reagan, um, I thought they did a tremendous job of, you know, really making a four or five minute walkthrough um, out of that film, filled with great scares, great creativity, um, and overall uh, a great time. And then you add the added bonus of any time I get to watch Tony get scared and when walking through something adds additional points to my walkthrough um, and having Tony get scared in this one, um, you know, really just makes it over the top for me. What, uh, what do you got here on your number 10? Uh, before I go to number 10, l l let's be clear. It was pretty dark in that maze. So we were kind of like a system here. It was like, if you fall, I fall kind of system. So, you know, can't leave that part out. It was, we would, we did go around like daytime and it was super dark in the sound stage. Um, number 10, I'm wearing the shirt. You know the property, you know the IP. Stranger Things 2018. Based around season one, this was the first year Stranger Things ever came to the event, and I was blown away. Uh, some of the most iconic scenes from the first season of, of going to Hawkins Lab to going to Hawkins the town to going inside the houses, you know, going inside the school to see a lot of these iconic scenes come to life, all with it wrapping up with Eleven pushing the Demogorgon against the chalkboard. Such a, a great uh, maze. And, and even the upside down scenes were so dope. It actually felt like you were in the upside down. Um, I'm so stoked for Stranger Things 4 coming this year. So, uh, yeah, Stranger Things 2018, man, that, that, that maze was something special right there. Uh, but on to number nine. Now, number nine is another special one to me. This was the first horror movie that ever got me into horror. And that is Freddy vs. Jason. Um, I believe that one came in 2016. That was, in my opinion, one of the greatest years of Halloween Horror Nights I've ever experienced. Um, and to see the two icons battle each other, it was kind of like an original mixed with the IP. Uh, the maze felt more original and so showed some iconic scenes. Like you got to visit Camp Crystal Lake. You got to visit Elm Street. You got to go in the house, the boiler room. You know, you got to see all this. Meanwhile, Freddie and Jason are fighting each other and you're caught right in the middle of it. Um, so win or lose, it doesn't matter because in the end, you lose because whoever wins is probably going to kill you. And, and the fun part about this maze was the ending was different. Every time you went through, uh, you either saw Jason as the victor holding Freddie's head with a dummy body on the floor. That was actually a person who would pop out at you. That was headless or vice versa. You saw Freddie carrying Jason's head, uh, regardless, whatever, uh, version of that maze you saw. I mean, it was a fun time. It was great. And, uh, I, I loved it. Uh, what's your number nine, my friend. 
Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just touch a base here on uh, Stranger Things back on your number 10. Um, that was a maze I wish I would have gone through. 2018 was a year I wish I would have begun going to the event. Um, and Stranger Things is one of those things I wish I would have gotten to go through. As well as Freddy vs. Jason. It's a movie I've never seen. Um, but, I mean, a Titan of Terror. Uh, two Titans of Terror, I think. Uh, yeah. With Freddy and Jason. Uh, really great. Um, and so that's, it seems like a fun walkthrough um, and something I'd like to see. Maybe I can f- watch two different walkthroughs and watch two different endings to that maze, which is super awesome. Uh, but my number nine is going back to 2019 when we had those mazes out where the Terra Tram now is. Um, and that queue uh, was uh, the original in that area. Curse of Pandora's Box. Uh, what a great original um, a maze that I don't think got as much love as it deserved. Um, we, we at the Knights of Horror have always been fans of originals that uh, Horror Knights puts on. Um, nothing against IPs, because IPs are, are just as great. Um, but there's something special about an original concept. Um, and being able to go through this with the, with the beautiful facade, um, as you're looking at that shop, and then you go in, and then if you've taught that door opening as you ventured on in into the unknown of the curse um it's just super amazing great scares and effects in here i love i can think of like the spiders the glow in the dark the steel walkers just a beautiful walkthrough that i i really enjoyed um and, and i was kind of happy that it came back in 2021 um was it my favorite maze of 2021 no but it, it was cool to be able to go through it again and really get to relive it uh, and and really just enjoy the uh, the beauty of an original maze. Percent, uh, yeah. Curse of Pandora's Box was phenomenal. Even when they came back for twenty twenty one, we really enjoyed it. So yeah, good 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 pick. Uh, your number eight. number eight. Yeah, since number eight, I had to wet my throat because I was just super excited there. I didn't want to lose my voice on this next one because this next one deserves all the love. We're going back to twenty nineteen. We're venturing. We went through toxic tunnel. Extra toxic tunnel over there. As you venture on back, this was a maze that if you went in 2019, you had early entry. When this maze was announced, a lot of people were going, how does this maze fit into Halloween Horror Nights? This is a comedy with some horror aspects, and that is Ghostbusters. What a beautiful and tremendous maze was Ghostbusters. It was a must-do every time we came in 2019. We had the Frequent Fear Pass, um, so we did venture out into Hollywood multiple times. um, And every time we went with early entry, we made sure we made time to go see Ghostbusters um, and make that trek through um, and make that trek back through Toxic Tunnel. Um, And so a a great maze, loved the facade. Um, I loved that this was the last year that we had a character out in front. Um, with that opportunity to interact with a character. Um, if you're a fan of the Knights of Horror, you know that we are, we love when things are interactive. Um, you know, I can think back to LA Haunted Hayride in 2019. We love the interactivity of that. Shout out to AJ, you know, you know. Um, and, uh, and Ghostbusters really had that as you were walking in with that character out in front, really just talking to the crowd and, and really getting them hyped up. And then once you got in, the maze delivered. Uh, it, it was it was beautifully scenically, um, it, you know what I mean. Walking through and just reliving it, the special effects that they had in here were super awesome as well. Um, in addition, you had the uh, what's the what's the marshmallow's name? I forget. Oh, it's Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, great, like I said, great scares too. Um, which which I thought you know, like a lot of people were saying, man, this is gonna suck. Where's the scares gonna come from? And they found ways, yeah. no, yeah, um, which, which I really enjoyed, uh, and so that's why it is my number eight. What is uh, what are you what are you cooking up over there, Tony? Very good number eight, my friend. Uh, I I like that one a lot. Uh, Ghostbusters was underrated, was the underdog of that year, and it proved everyone wrong. My number eight, however, is going to a maze that I had wanted to see at Halloween Horror Nights for so long, and I never got the opportunity to, especially based off the original film, uh, and that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, What was so cool about 2021 is there was um, three really good mazes that I absolutely loved. Um, 
and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2021 is one of them. Um, so well detailed from, you know, the start of the maze to go through the house, the Sawyer house, you know, to see the, some of the most iconic scenes, to go to the gas station, to even recreate that shot of the corpse on, like, the gravestone and whatnot. They capture that maze so great. And I loved seeing Leatherface everywhere. Uh, that was really cool. The dinner scene, feeding grandpa, like all that was really cool. You know, Sammy and I have kind of been on a little bit of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kick as of late. We've been playing the new game. So to kind of think back at this maze and to kind of look at the game and to see how spot on both are and everything from the film, it, it's just so cool to live it and then come home and play it and then watch it. You know, it's like you, you're getting a piece of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre every time more and more so. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2021, one of my favorite mazes of all time. Um, but now we go on to number seven, which was in the same area, the Mummy Q. Uh, and I know this one's probably going to be a little bit more controversial because I know this was both mixed reviews on this one. And that goes to 2017's The Shining. Um, I had just watched that movie for the first time, I think, in 2016. And after I watched that movie, I was obsessed with the theories, the conspiracy theories about the hotel, you know, the ghost, like, you know, the ending scene of Jack being in that photo. You know, I was just, excuse me. He's dying. I know. Anyway, I was just confused of like everything with that movie. There was so much mysteries to the movie and, and to kind of see that come to life was really cool to go to the hedgehog maze, to go see through the psychological aspect of the all work and no play, make Jack a dull boy walls and, and curtains and everything. Uh, the uh, Pepper's ghost effect with the, uh, the ghost twins. That was really cool to see the bloody elevator scene, you know, the gold room, the, the, the corpses in the gold room, you know, the, the ending scene where Jack's frozen to death, uh, all that stuff. It, it was amazing to see that movie uh, come to life and, and me being a lifelong fan of that film or not even a lifelong, but you know, more, recent fan of that film a diehard fan of that film you know it was really cool to kind of experience that film and i know that was john murdy's one of john murdy's passion projects so that for him to get the opportunity to bring that to life was really cool yeah that's a, a movie i've seen most of um i did see the sequel though that's where the sequel matters yeah dr sleep don't sleep on dr sleep i'll tell you don't. what uh but the shining is good shout out to stanley cooper if you're watching, drop a comment down below, Stanley. Yeah, he's not watching. He's passed away. That's true. If he's yeah. watching from above. Yeah, more like it. <laughs> All right, my number seven, right? Yes, number seven. Number seven. Ooh, this is going to be in the courtyard. We're going back to my first year of Horror Nights. We're going to celebrate an entire year in one maze. And that is Holidays in Hell. Yeah. One... One of the best, uh, one of the another really great original maze here. Um, you have a great facade. I'm really excited for it to be returning this upcoming season. Um, and if you want to know where it's going to fall on my hype list for 2023, you'll have to stay tuned later on in the week. We'll be covering our most hyped mazes for 2023. Um, and so uh, we will dive in, in there, but I'll just touch the surface. Great facade. Great music by Figures. Shout out. Big figure. Um, and ju <laughs> just a really fun, fun time in there. Um, the fact that you get to really live out a lot of holidays throughout throughout that year. And then you add on top of that when it was in 2019 and exited out into another scare zone that really just extended that maze further um, as we celebrated Christmas. Um, I'm a big fan of Christmas. I love Christmas. And then you add yes, a little bit do. of horror to it. And uh, it's a uh, top notch. Um, so I'm, we will be missing that this year, four nights. But uh, I don't want to. I don't want to waste all of your time here with holidays in hell. Number six. My, number six. All right, perfect. Number six. We're gonna start the love. We're gonna venture for, into that to that void. We're gonna venture into a, a void of love. Yep. We're going to 2022. The Mummy Q. That is Universal Monsters Legends Collide. I know that some people may have not loved this maze. Other people may have loved it. It's a, I thought it was a pretty solid maze. Um, really fun concept. You basically have uh, all of those monsters fighting over that amulet. Um, and you get to venture in through a warehouse. You get to go through a graveyard. It was just really fun. You have some of my favorite scares where you have basically you're caught between two monsters. You're getting scares from both sides. Um, 
And, and it was a great story. Um, I loved that at Midsummer Scream. Uh, prior to it, we had gotten to dive in um, and really get to the lore of the event. Um, and then for those who were fortunate enough to go to Orlando, they had one thing that you could see there. Um, and that story really continued on into Hollywood. Um, and so I really enjoyed that there, that this was tying both coasts together. Um, and it was just overall a solid maze. And then you add uh, the music by Slash in into there. That music rips. Um, you'll catch me listening to all of Slash's Universal Monsters music out on Spotify. So if you haven't already, go check it out because the music is top notch. Hell yeah, What's your number man. six? Number six. Let's let's keep it in the Universal Monster family, shall we? Uh, the Bride of Frankenstein Lives 2021. Maze number two that I thought were out of the three. Um, unfortunately, the third one didn't uh, make the list, but still a banger maze, which was the Curse of Pandora's Box. But let's talk about The Bride of Frankenstein Lives, the spiritual sequel to The Bride of Frankenstein. I mean, what can I say about this, this maze? I mean, you walk in. You, you see uh, the iconic scene of her recovering the monster from the pillars after the big fire happens. And the whole maze is about her and her stopping at nothing to be with her one true love. And I think there's such a deeper emotional message behind this than just a horror tale, if you really think about it. But, I mean... It was so badass of how they made this character who was always that kind of side character now the the main attraction and they made her a badass at that and i was so stoked to see that i mean she's hunting vampires she's taking their blood she has them chained up you know then she's feeding the blood to frankenstein which makes them essentially immortal because it's vampire's blood and it makes him even taller so it makes him kind of like an ultra frankenstein which i thought was so awesome um i hope we get kind of a continuation of that character i know we had heard that we may see the bride walking around for photo ops this year so we are definitely going to be looking out for that because like that's something we really want to do um but yeah i was just so stoked about what they did and what they what they offered with this maze and, and to make it even better for me i that was the year i got to go to both coasts for halloween horror nights so i got to see their version of it too and they had this massive facade of just like do the bride trying to lift Frankenstein out of that, that, you know, all that, uh, you know, rubble and stuff. So, uh, I, I was tripping out, uh, to see the, the comparisons was really cool. They even had a creature from the black lagoon Easter egg in their maze in Orlando, which was really cool. Uh, shout out to the creature I'm waiting for them to, uh, bring the creature one day, hopefully. But yeah, Bride of Frankenstein lives such a freaking phenomenal maze. I hope one day I get to experience that at least one more time. But I always have YouTube to look back at it. But let's be honest, the videos don't do it justice. Well, that definitely does said, not. Oh yeah, it doesn't. Number five, um, Universal Monsters 2018, the original, the one that kickstarted it all. You know, we got it here first and uh, the intro. Oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah. And Bride, uh, some slashes, my favorite music from slashes and Bride. But Universal Monsters 2018, I mean, where to begin? Your your entry point to this to this to this house was a courtyard, uh, specifically a graveyard. Um, and you got to see all the iconic monsters names on all these tombstones. Uh, you had Frankenstein's monster popping out, Frankenstein's monster holding the little girl that he kills in the film, the wolf man popping out, all leading out to this giant mob in front of Dr. Frankenstein's castle, which is on fire. From whence you enter, you go into an, uh, original kind of old school looking film room, which is all the films of all the universal monsters. You see the monsters and the likes of the invisible man, the phantom of the opera. The Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's Monster, The Mummy, Dracula, The Brides of Dracula, The Wolfman. Did I say The Wolfman? I don't know. I don't know. Either way, he I'm was just counting. <laughs> uh, you had um, you had Renfield in there. You had Igor in there. I mean, the list goes on. This was honestly a love letter to the legacy of the Universal Monsters and a nice rebooted version to make them even scarier how they uh, always intended to be. And I loved everything about this maze. They did a, they did the monsters justice. Um, and I'm so glad every single year since then we've had an adaptation of the Universal Monsters because it is just phenomenal. Yeah, that is the one that got away from me. 
Uh, we have Stranger Things in 2018, and we have the original Universal Monsters first iteration, uh, the one that began the lore um, for the every every year since. Basically, um, I don't think we're done with this Universal Monsters love coming in at my number five. It is my first year again. We are in the back lot. We got through Ghostbusters, and you know what we do next? We had to go watch a little fight happen here. We had to go watch Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. Ooh, and while we were in that queue, let's just start off with the banger that is Slash's soundtrack. As you're waiting, getting anticipating, your blood is going. You're ready to go. That heart rate is up, and you're hearing the little fine gypsy music um, as you're in the camp waiting to venture on in. And then you go on in, scurrying through. And you really just get to watch Frankenstein and the Wolfman fight it out. Because they want, to pr- they want to prove who is real and who is not. And we fall in the middle of it. And at times, you're caught between the Frank- Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster and the Wolfman as they fight. Um, you get to watch the bride in there, I believe. Uh, she's, on, she's burnt <laughs> in that one scene. Um, yeah. Just overall great scares, great music. Um, and maybe because it was my first year going to the event, I hold it in such high regard. Um, that I put it above Legends Collide. But you know which one I do not put above Legends Collide? Coming in at number four, Tony showed it a lot of love, but I'm going to show it even more love. The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. Um, coming into that courtyard, it's 2021, was my favorite maze of 2021, if I, if I do recall correctly. Um, and again, like I mentioned with Holidays in Hell, this one... Like Tony didn't touch on this one goes out on into Scream Queens, another scare zone. Um, so you get all of the wonderful goodness of a maze, then you get it added on with those Scream Queens and what they did there. Uh, and, and just overall, 10 out of 10, the Bride of Frankenstein lives. The music is just unreal. The scares were great. Um, and then, you know, we're really coming into an event where we're saying, hey, we didn't get an event last year, things aren't looking good. Uh, you know what I mean? Budget cuts may be there, but man, they poured their heart and soul into the creation of this of this maze, I mean, yeah. and, and we felt it. Um, you add in the, the 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 behind the scenes looks we got prior to it. You add the the teaser, the teaser, the little bumper we got when it was released was so good. Hundred percent. I'm gonna put that teaser in right now. probably the best teaser i've ever seen for a halloween horror nights maze yeah the teaser is unreal the maze delivered we had high expectations walking at and they exceeded the expectations uh that's a maze i wish like tony said that i could be able to go through again um just, just because it was so build a lot and just put all the mazes in the past like in that lot so i have them forever i'll buy hey, I'm, lights I'm, in my own effects <laughs> i don't even need I, not even that hey universal i have an idea you and me, we're talking right now. It's, it's you and me. What if it's just an idea? Virtual reality is going to become big. What if you just decided to start sending people through your maze with virtual reality cameras so that in the future we can relive it? Um, I really get to be immersed in walking through it because this is That's one of those mazes idea, that Sam, deserve- You just came up with a billion dollar idea. Billion dollar idea. Billion. You show university. You show us love each and every year now, um, and so you know this is a this is my idea. Just think about it, because this is one of those mazes that deserves some future walkthroughs. Hundred percent, Bride Frankenstein lives. Hundred percent, number four for me. It was my, for you. 
Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. We're taking it all the way back to 2011, all the way back to where it all started for me as a wee little lad. Uh, I love music mazes because of Alice Cooper. Um, I got to go through Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare. I got to go through Alice Cooper, Go to Hell. Um, and, and, you know, music mazes to me are special when you can take music and, and blend it with horror. Um, it, 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 it really does create something special and, and Alice Cooper's music captures the horror aspect very well. If you've ever seen him in concert, he's very theatrical in concert. He puts on like an actual performance, uh, and tells a story with all of his music. And, uh, you see that on stage. And uh, I was fortunate enough to see that in concert and it, and it, it was mind blowing. And to kind of think back at all those, you know, years that he did the mazes with Horror Nights, it was really cool to kind of see the whole uh, mind of Alice Cooper come to life, you know, and that was before I was even a real like big metal fan. Like I knew who Alice Cooper was because like school's out and everything. But that right there really Wayne's wanted World. me to Wayne's World, Wayne's World as well. Yes. Wayne's World, the, you know, little little VIP. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I really think that, uh, this, this maze captured his music and did his music justice. Uh, I remember constantly watching it on YouTube, the walkthroughs, and then I got invited to go and I just remember just being in love with it. I just remember, I remember the, the thing that scared the shit out of me the most in that maze at the very end was this giant ass spider. Uh, and anyone knows that I fucking am terrified of spiders. So I think I just doomed myself. Um, anyway. That being said, uh, Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare. I had a show 2011, Some Love, because I really hold a strong memory in here that really kickstarted me to love Haunt. And uh, now we're here at number three. Another banger maze out of, in my opinion, and that I said earlier in the video, one of the greatest years at Halloween Horror Nights 2016. Krampus. Now, Krampus as a film was phenomenal cult classic uh it's something we do here on the night tour every single year as we watch uh krampus with you guys live on the on the air that's our way of kind of wishing everyone a merry christmas um and you know to see that movie translated into real life as a maze and you know sammy brought up of course the uh the special little giveaways they used to do outside of mazes this is one of the mazes that had a password you had the mailman he looked all like frozen they did a really good job on the makeup and costuming for this uh, and he would hand you letters and stuff, what like what you know from like the film and everything. So that was really cool. And then you go in through some of the most iconic scenes. You actually see Krampus a bunch of times. You see all of his evil toys and everything. You see the gingerbread people, um, and of course you see all the uh, all the all the victims dying one by one. Leading up to that final pit scene where he drops the boy into the pit, and then you go into the false reality, which ends up being a snow globe and. That ending was so cool. He was like walking in and then he pops out at the end um, through the door at like the final scare. Uh, I really enjoyed that maze. They did a phenomenal job. Facade looked incredible. All this uh, maze set detail looked incredible. Um, and yeah, 2016 was just incredible. You're number three. Incredible. My number three. Dude, once again, we're going to the lore of this channel. If you've been a fan of this channel for a while, and this one would probably come at no surprise that I have this so high on my list. But some might be shocked that I don't have it higher. It's my favorite Jordan Peele film in 2019 in the Teratram area, Q area, is Jordan Peele's Us. Just, just a great, great time. This is one. This is another maze that I wish I could have walked through many, many, many more times. Just because I really thought that it represented the film so good. Because you get to really just venture in, you know, beginning as a little walkthrough um, that you see on the Santa Cruz Pier. And then just really getting to live out that entire movie. Um, just really good. You get to see the tethered. Visit the... Uh, the underworld. I don't know what the fudge it's called off the top of my head. Um, it was just so good. Um, the music is good as you're waiting in the line, even though it did become repetitive because this line was long every night, um, but it was worth it. Um, and so really enjoyed Jordan Peele's us. Um, if you, if you got a good walkthrough, you got the car working in there, which was super cool. Um, I, I just really thought it was awesome. And even, even, if, even better, I wish we would have gotten to go through. They even had some of the uh, cast go out and, and scare in there. 
Yeah. Uh, and you get after Paul leaves. That's super awesome. Yep. Um, just, just uh, so many of the great mo- moments from that movie made its way into this maze. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, in fact, now that I think about it, I kind of do want to rewatch us prior. Well, Sammy, it's funny you bring that up because I just found out something today that I think you'll find out that you'll like as well. Part of the Exterminator's Terror Tram is we get to go back to Jupiter's Claim, and they are going to be having the tethered from us in there. I do right, like that because, be. yeah, it's because we got them last year during the Terror Tram, and that was super awesome. Oh, yeah. And we'll get them again. Count that as a victory. But Count that as a my big number dub. three. Big dubs. The only other dub I want is I want to find an Us shirt. I cannot find one. Every time I look up Us shirt, I'm getting United States of America shirts. And I do not want a United States of America shirt. I want the Jordan Pills Us cover on a shirt. So I will be on the lookout for that. And if I can find one before if I can find one before Horror Nights, I will be buying one. Just because I just that movie is so awesome. Uh, speaking of awesome though, my number two. This is coming from last year. Um, a banger. Even though it was coming back for its third time, it was my first time. This is a maze where I watched it in its walkthroughs of 2011, 2012. I've watched behind the scenes. I've watched John Murray take people through this maze. And the fact that I got to live it, top notch, and that is La Llorona. What a beautiful, beautiful maze. Uh, so great entering in with the church effects uh, the little kids that people got upset about that were drowning <laughs> um just a, an overall top notch legend you know it's like come on i know i know she drowned her kids yeah you know get over it they had to show it yeah they had to show her love uh it, it was just super awesome it's a story i heard growing up growing up in a, a, a very mexican american town um a lot, of my, a lot of my friends that were either first generation, like first generation of, um, Americans, you know, their families coming from there and hearing their stories about how they've encountered La Llorona, um, you know, and, and how, you know, on the countryside, you can hear those screams um, and then being able to go through it. It was just super awesome. And the fact that they really took their time to, to do their research um, to understand the urban legend um, and hired uh, people that that are of mexican descent um to, to come in and, and help consult on it it's just such a such a great move and I, and I really felt like this move this this uh house or maze whatever you want to call it to uh, great justice to the tales of la Llorona. and not to mention some of the funniest moments in my life was sitting next to you in the theater and watching that movie i mean oh yeah that movie is that movie's great it's a great movie. I forgot about it's that movie. movie though. Yeah, a good one. Uh, but that wasn't what it was based off. They actually did an original and, and their original slaps. I, I love Lyra and I've gotten to see just about every iteration of it from 2011, 2012, and now 2022. And it got better every single year. So I, I'm so happy to, that you were happy about it. I know you wanted to see it for a long time. So that makes me happy to know that uh, you got to finally experience it and see it with your own eyes. Um, number two for me is going to come to a shocker with a lot of people because they probably thought this was going to be number one because of my love for this film. I have all the Funko Pops. I just actually now displayed them all today. I have the door cover on my door right now. I have autograph memorabilia. Let's just say I'm a little obsessed with this movie. I cried when you met them. I cried when I met the Kyoto Brothers because, uh, yeah, lifelong fan. And that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, 2019's Killer Clown from Outer Space, uh, such an exciting year for me. Uh, Sammy knows this more than anyone, uh, because he was there with me almost every single night we went to HHN. I made it clear that every time we went there, we would go through Killer Clowns from Outer Space at least once, and we would try to hit us at least once. Um, Sammy, being the trooper that he is, uh, would go through with me most of the nights, um, that he went with me. Uh, and anyone else that I drug along with me, they went through with me and they watched me be a kid over this maze. Um, such a great film and capturing the most iconic scenes, even starting with the facade itself, capturing the uh, the old man, you know, getting electrocuted from the, the tent like that was even cool. You even got a little scene before the actual maze, which I thought was awesome. And then to go in and see the spaceship, to go in, to see the town, to see some of the most iconic scenes, to see all the clowns, you know. 
another door, you know, another door. Another door you know, I, I, I think hands down though, the two most memorable scenes that I will never forget about that maze was the uh, shadow puppet scene. I thought they captured really well. And the police, uh, the police officers, uh, scene when they used them as a puppet, that was awesome. Um, so I, I absolutely love this maze. And, um, when it came back in 21, I was super stoked. Uh, I went through it a few times and, uh, I know it was 22, right? Was it last year? No, yeah, it, was, it came back last year. Last year it was last year. Yeah, when it came back in 22, yeah. we went through it. I loved it again. Um, so yeah, I, I'm so thankful that they finally brought killer clowns from outer space and not to mention yeah, John Masari's music playing. So that was getting me hyped in line. So. Yeah, but you guys are probably curious now what my number one is. I know Sammy already knows it, but you yeah. guys are going to be a little shocked to find out what my number one is. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Wait, but my- before you get to number one, before you get to number one, I just want to make another comment. If you really want to know this man's undying love for Killer Clowns of Outer Space, you can watch him interview John Mazzari. You can watch him interview Grant Kramer. Two great interviews um, early in our channels. Who played one of the... Uh, oh, uh, people look awesome. Dogs. Yeah. Well, this man loves this maze, and so the fact that this is not his number one absolutely shocks me yeah. to my core. Um, but now that I know what his number one is, so go hey, for man, it. Take it I've away. Been listening to this band for since I was a wee lad, and I'm talking wee wee lad. And yeah, I, I was so stoked to finally get to see them on the farewell tour, and I've seen him twice solo, and that is Black Sabbath 13 3D. Ozzy Osbourne, hands down, is the godfather of heavy metal. You know, him and Lemmy, them two together, godfathers of heavy metal. And for me, you know, it was such a thing when I got to see Black Sabbath on the Farewell Tour. And then, you know, this album just came out, uh, 13, when that maze was uh, coming out. You know, to hear all this and see all this, it was really cool. And to actually walk through it. I remember we actually made a family trip about Halloween Horror Nights because, like, everyone went because of Black Sabbath 13, 3D, like, it was awesome, you know, and, and they brought some of the most iconic songs to life. You know, you, you got the likes of Black Sabbath. You got the likes of Iron Man, War Pigs. That's your favorite, Sammy. I know that one. Uh, Children of the Grave, Electric Funeral. You know, you name it. All the iconic songs of Black Sabbath were featured in this maze, and they did a great job of bringing them to life. They even had Ozzy Osbourne and the bassist of Black Sabbath, Geezer Butler, go through and react to it. And they even gave it the thumbs up. Like, this maze was something else. I wish I can, uh, again, with the VR idea, I really uh, wish I can uh, relive that maze and walk through it again because it was so amazing. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne have always held a special place in my heart with my taste of music. And um, to see them in concert, to go through this maze, you know, to listen to them all my life, like this was something special. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely think that was the greatest maze of all time, in my opinion. All right, my number one. You may be asking Sammy yourself, God. you may be asking yourself, hey, Sam, I've been watching the channel. I know you would love us. I know that you've talked so highly about La Llorona, but what can talk these two? And I will give you the answer as we venture on into the Curious George parking lot, 2022. One of my absolute favorite, uh, favorite facades. Um, a maze that when I, or house that when I walk through, I made sure to take my time and really bask it in because I knew that I was only getting one Horror Nights visit. So I wanted to take my time and enjoy each and every moment of this house. And that is Scarecrow the Reaping. What a beautiful maze. The artistic design in this is just out of this world. Um, we really felt like we ventured into the Dust Bowl as we as we were in Kansas. We got transported. We went halfway across the country to Kansas and, and walked through this. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Yeah, no, we were. We were. I don't think we were in California anymore. I, I don't think we were in Hollywood. We walked in Kansas and we 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 ventured it back in time um, into the Dust Bowl um, and really got to see a reimagining of that historical era. Um, and seeing those scarecrows that were absolutely terrifying. I don't really find myself getting too scared anymore as I walk through many houses, but this one did catch me a few times. Ooh, even uh, even Siri wants to jump in on the action on this guy. Because um, it's just I that. Scare the shit out of me. I heard that. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, my watch. I hit my watch. Uh, but yeah, Siri wanted to jump in on this one because it was such a great, great house. Um it's a, once another one that I just wish I could have gone through. It's amazing. I will go back and watch walkthroughs of sometimes when I'm feeling down just because it was so good. 
Yeah. Um, uh, you uh, you can watch me walking through it on I believe on our vlog from when I went to Horror Nights and you can see me just really lighten up and and talking back to the camera like hey bro this is this is real this is a yeah. real deal like I was super hyped for this one this is one of those mazes that at Midsummer Scream prior to the event John Murdy went in gave us a behind the scenes look gave us some ideas and I was like this is gonna this is gonna be pretty popping and I walked in there and it exceeded my expectations um, and so that's why it's number one on my list. My favorite house of all time thus far. Thus far. And now we venture into 2023, a new chapter. Mm-hmm. Now we are caught up in the present, looking towards the future. But before we get there, what are your top 10 favorite mazes of all time? Leave some comments down below. We'd love to read them. We'd love to see what your choices were. And, and if you've been going to the event a lot longer than we have, or if you just got started, we'd love to hear what your top 10 favorite mazes of all time are. Uh, also, hit the like button on this video because uh, it helps get it out there via the algorithm. And uh, we want more people to join our little community and talk horror nights with us. Also, follow us on all of our socials, Thread, Instagram, and TikTok, at the Knights of Horror, X, at Knights of Horror. And kick at Knights of Horror Gaming. Make sure you're subscribed right here to the Knights of Horror with those bell notifications every time we go with a new video. Because we have we got a lot of them this week. Huh? You're gonna we got a lot of them this week. week. You're going to get a lot of them this week, but we have a lot of content coming this uh, haunt season, and we want you to be a part of it. So without further ado, we will see you guys tomorrow for another video with HHN Week. Peace.